Hey y'all, Bobby Hughes here with Hollow Point Firearms and today what I want to go over with you guys is another form of uh, bullet lubrication for your cast bullets and it's called pan lubing. Now if you're watching uh, some of the other reloading videos that I have, I actually have a, a video that's called lubing and sizing your cast bullets. And uh, that form of lubing those cast bullets is called uh, is what's called tumble lubing. It's basically uh, the use of a uh, of a bowl, some sort of tumbler, and liquid alox lubrication. And uh, then you tumble them, and then spread them out, and let them dry. The thing about uh, tumble lubing is that the lubrication that we use for that is real sticky, and it gets over the whole bullet. All right. You know, what that it doesn't damage anything, but it does cause um, it, one, it makes a mess when you're reloading because all that lubrication gets into the dies. Two, it's a mess when you're you know load them into your magazine. That's a pain in the butt because you get it all over your fingers. And uh, three, it smokes when you fire it, the heat uh, the powder actually burns the lubrication off and it smokes. Um, so, like I said, nothing really super serious, but it's kind of a hassle. So what I'm going to show you guys today is called pan lubing. And basically what it is, is uh, using the actual uh, lubrication rings in a cast bullet. You see the little rings there. And basically what this is going to do is just lube uh, from here back. And it's going to fill those rings in with our uh, lubrication in order to get a good seal when we seat our bullet in the case. So uh, stick with us and I'm going to show you how it's done. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is talk about the actual lubricant that we're using. And you'll see they look like little cupcakes, but uh, I'll tell you, this is some homemade stuff that I made here. And what it's made out of is basically, uh, I used a pound of paraffin wax that you can pick up at uh, your local grocery store uh, in the canning section. And then I used a pound of petroleum jelly, alright, or Vaseline. Uh, make sure that when you use the petroleum jelly that you get 100% pure petroleum jelly. There's some out there that's like lotions and additives and so on and so forth. You got to use the real stuff, all right? So I took a pound of uh, wax, a pound of petroleum jelly. I put it in my little cooker here um, to heat up and melt. And then I added a tablespoon of STP gas treatment. Now you can use gas treatment or, or oil treatment. Either one. I've seen people, you know, with that use oil treatment. I've seen people that use gas treatment. Either way, you can use either one of them. It doesn't matter. You have the same effects. They both have the same chemicals in them, and that's what you're needing are those chemicals. All right. So we use the wax, the petroleum jelly, the STP gas treatment, and then for color, I threw in a couple of red crayons. All right. You melt all of that down into one concoction. And that is your bullet lubrication, all right, or the lube that we're using. Now, for storage, what I did was I poured them into a cupcake pan, and now I've got these convenient little cupcakes. Um, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw some more in here because it's probably it's gonna take a quite a bit to for all the lubricating we're gonna be doing. Now we're just going to let these melt. Let this melt down. I'm just using a, uh, I think this is actually a fondue pot. I got this little set at a, uh, at a second hand shop for like five bucks, man. And it's got the little, the eye of the burner here, and the pot and the lid. So what we're going to do is go ahead and let that melt down. But that's all it is. Nothing more than just the wax, the uh, petroleum jelly, and some STP gas treatment. And that's it. Uh, and then the crayons for color. And, uh, that's pretty much how you make it. Now, let's uh, scroll around here to the other side while this is melting down. All right, now over on this side, I've got our um, the bullets that we're going to be lubing. I'm using just some, uh, I think these are 9-inch uh, cake pans. I got these at the same second-hand shop I got the, other, the, uh, the, the cooker at. 
I think I paid like two bucks for the both of them. And uh, what we're going to be lubricating today are some uh, 38 special rounds that um, I cast a couple of weeks ago and I just haven't had time to, uh, to get them lubed. And uh, that's what we're going to be lubing today. All right. Now, what you're going to need are the two pans and then set your bullets in the pans. Um, and then you're also going to need a, uh, a turkey baster. All right. And the turkey baster is what we're going to actually spread the wax in here with. Now, uh, since our wax is melting down right now, what we're going to do, I found that putting this wax into this with everything cold, uh, the wax tends to peel off of the rounds pretty easy. So, and that's because it's going from hot to shock it where it's cold because this pan and stuff is cold. So we're going to use, I'm going to use a hair dryer uh, or you can use a heat gun or whatever and I'm going to heat this up and we're just going to do one pan at a time, all right? So I'm going to heat this up and uh, bring it up to a little bit warmer temperature so that the wax will actually stick a little bit better. Alright, so our wax is uh, melted down. We've got our uh, bullets warmed up and now we're just going to take our turkey baster soak our hot wax up in the turkey baster and put it in our pan here you notice that when uh, you heat up the pan it'll actually spread a little bit more evenly than if you don't heat up the pan All right, so we just want to make sure that we get enough lube to cover all three uh, grease grooves in the bullet. And uh, I think we need a little bit more. And that should be good. All right, so go ahead and do the, uh, the other side now. Now that this is done, we'll let this set for uh, probably about 12 hours or so, and it'll harden up uh, really nice, and then we'll go from there. All right, guys, so our, uh, our bullets have been setting up in our wax or our lubrication. Now, they've actually been setting for a couple days. I haven't had time to get back down here and uh, push them through yet, but I'm just going to show you guys how to go ahead and push them out and also we'll go ahead and get them sized too All right now um, they make contraptions that stick down in it and you push a button and it pulls them out or whatever that takes a long time so what we do is we just turn it over just work the bottom of our pan a little bit until they fall out just like that and then I reset my pan that's what I call it resetting it Set that over to the side, and then we're just going to take our wax, use our thumb, and push it right out. All right, and you'll just continue to push all of these out until you get them all out. Alright guys, so now what we've got here is, it's a uh, Lee bullet lubricating and sizing kit, alright? And they actually make lubrication uh, rings setups for this, but uh, in this case, I just use the, uh, the sizing part of it. 
basically what it is is it's just a die. It comes in this little red container here, um, and it's just a, a die that screws into the top of your press. All right, and they've got different size, obviously different size dies for different size bullets. And this one here is a .358, um, so it's uh, for that's what we need for uh, 38 special and uh, 357 mag. All right. So we're going to be using the 358 uh, set up here. Basically what you want to do is loosen our ring up here and screw. You run your, uh, it comes with a little post. So you see your post in the press just like that. Your bullet's actually going to set right on this post. You want to run it up into the die and screw the die down until it touches and then back it out about a half of a turn. All right. And then we'll just tighten it up with the uh, little locking nut that comes with it. All right, and then from there, it's got a hole in the bottom of it. Works out perfect. You can just set that right on top of your uh, your die there with the cap on it, and uh, we'll start sizing some bullets. So you'll just set it on the post, run it up through the sizer, and it won't fall out. It catches itself up in there. And what we're going to do is just size all of these up. You just keep running them up through there and eventually they'll poke out the top and just fall into the little cup that catches them. So we're about to wrap this up here, and uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the some of the advantages of sizing your bullets. Um, some of this stuff, some of uh, the different calibers that you shoot, depending on what you're shooting out of and things like that, it's not necessary to actually size the bullets. In some um, in some cases, the uh, the actual um, mold or the die or the I'm sorry, the mold, the casting mold for the bullets themselves are pretty dead on. I use Lee molds and uh, they seem to work. They're pretty accurate. Um, most of the time they're within a three thousandths of an inch from being uh, exactly true to the caliber that I need it for, the size that I need it. Um, but sizing has its advantages. Um, one, it knocks off any of the loose lubricant that's not inside of those grease grooves. All right? uh, so that's less mess on your press. Two, it also uh, any flaws that you might have in the casting process, whether it be a boat on the end of the tail or something like that, it's going to knock that off of there. So it's going to make your perfect, uh, your bullet um, as perfect as it, it can be and as symmetrical as it, uh, as it possibly can be. So I definitely recommend sizing your bullets. So we're done uh, sizing our uh, 38 Special Bullets or our .358 bullets. And uh, these are all finished. You can see they're all cut up here at the top. So uh, that's pretty much the process. You're just gonna, when you get ready, you're just gonna remove the canister from the uh, the uh, die. Be sure to hold the hold it, flip it over, and you're gonna remove remove the die from the press. And you're still gonna have a few bullets in here. You're just gonna want to tap those out. Make sure that's clear. And then you can remove your post from your press. You can see there's quite a bit of that excess wax or lubricant that's on there, and that's the excess that was pushed off as it was going through the press. So that's pretty much the process for uh, pan lubing and sizing your cast bullets. And uh, I think it's a really neat skill. Uh, as always, I'm always trying to uh, do things uh, to make myself more self-reliant. Um, and to be able to recycle and save some money and uh, still be able to shoot. And uh, I definitely think casting and sizing and, and looping your own bullets and reloading is a good way to do that. Like I've mentioned before, it does have a little bit of cost up front initially. Um, you know, for casting bullets and, and sizing and, and looping and everything, you've got some cost in it. There's no doubt about it. But uh, let's just talk about what we did today. Um, the lubrication. The cost of the, the materials to make the lube that we used is really cheap. 
uh, you can buy a pound of wax for a dollar and you can buy a uh, pound of uh, petroleum jelly for a dollar and then your STP fuel treatment is a couple dollars for a bottle. And you don't have to buy a big bottle, a small bottle will do because you're only using one or two tablespoons in your mixture. Okay? So, and then you, you need some sort of cook pot or crock pot or something. Check at salvage stores or second hand shops. Um, a lot of times you can buy them cheap. Like I said, I got mine there and it cost five dollars for that, the whole fondue little cook set and it works perfectly. It come with a lid so I just put my leftover wax once I get done making my bullets back in the pot and wait till next time. And uh, I've made that batch, that batch I have actually looped um, right around 3,000 bullets with that one batch and I still have lube left so it goes a long ways. Um, so your initial cost in lubing is going to run you probably about 10 bucks and then your sizing die, uh, if you already have a single stage press, your sizing die is going to run you about $25, all right? So it's, it's fairly inexpensive and it's uh, just another way to be self-reliant. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, got something out of it. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you like the video, rate the video. It just helps us out and lets us know that you care. And uh, please consider subscribing. Uh, I've got a lot of cool videos coming up here pretty soon. I'm about to start on a mini series on reloading, and I'm going to go through all the calibers that I reload, the recipes that I use. We're going to do some anatomy and terms on uh, reloading as far as uh, presses go and stuff like that. So I definitely think you're going to enjoy it. So uh, subscribe so you get those updates whenever we post our new videos. All right. So uh, until next time, get out there, shoot some guns, be safe, and most importantly, guys, have fun. See y'all later.